All right, guys. So we are going to be taking this apart just enough to get to be able to thermal paste it. It's very, it's not very difficult at all. So if you don't know how to get this off, um, you probably shouldn't be doing this kind of work. But just, just kidding. But yeah. So anyway, this thing slides off, and, and if you've gotten this far before, you'll know that this part, you know, it has three screws. So if you look down here, what I do is I, I'll, I'll make little reams of tape. So it's this is like the most convenient thing to do when you're working on stuff like this because the, the, th the three screws on the tape lets me know exactly what location this was so you know right one to the right you know blah 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 on this one and that's just how I keep track of screws and you'll see how I do it and I'll explain it as I go so you never lose track of where any all right so let's go ahead and get the view of what we're gonna need okay so what you're gonna need is a good thermal paste I'm trying out cool uh, laboratory liquid pro earlier I, I thermal pasted it with Arctic Silver 5 on one GPU cool laboratory liquid pro on the CPU and then I used Arctic Silver Ceramic 2 on the other GPU. And the one that's performing the worst right now is actually the Arctic Silver 5. The best is the Liquid Pro. So we're gonna go ahead and just repaste the other two graphics cards with this stuff. But anyway, point was, um, what you're gonna need is probably like a little pry tool. I just use a little one that I got out of a Apple iPhone kit from I think an iPhone 4 or something. This is a screwdriver with very, very light magnetism. I mean, it, it, it almost drops the screws every time, but it's just enough to pull the screws out. And then I got an unmagnetized different screw here. It's like a pen that I found at a hardware store and it's not magnetized, but it fits the screws even better. And the last but not least, you're gonna want some sort of duster, dust off, you know, the brand just to clean up any of the dust that you find while we're in here so okay so let's go ahead and get an overhead shot of this alienware 18 and we'll get moving okay so we're gonna get right into it if my hands get in the way I'm sorry but I will explain what screws I'm taking out and then that should be all we need first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out this battery you don't need to do this part if you're confident in where you put the stuff I mean I am but it's better to be safe than sorry and trust me, if you ever lose track of where your screws are, the, the time it takes to find everything out or download a manual or something to refigure out where everything goes is not worth the amount of time it takes to make a little tape ream like that and then um, go. So I'm using the black one because it's the one that fits the best. I kind of just, I, I use these to unscrew them. I probably should just use the, the, the magnetized one, but it's it's not the, it's not technically the right size for the Alienware. Then I just come over here and grab it with the magnetized screw. And I like to put the head face down because that's the most surface area it's gonna stick to the tape the best. So yeah, just like that, there's the battery. Now you're gonna go ahead and come under here take this connector out try not to worry about it too much I mean I would be I would try and be careful as much as you can always but this connector is kind of like hot glued in so the cords won't come out or anything and it's pretty pretty simple to come out just like that and then, anyway so we're gonna pull that out okay anyway set that aside make a neat pile keep the electronics away from each other that kind of stuff so the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna disconnect the hard drive and then unscrew it one of the cool things about Alienware is that when you do this a lot of the screws will stay in place because they have like a lock on the other side so you don't have to worry about where most of it goes but anyway over here on top you'll see this little connector with a black strip here with a little ganner on there just pull it up and pull it gently you don't want to break that little pull tab because then it's gonna suck to get off later anyway then you just unscrew this always go in a star pattern it's easier it stresses the bolts less all that kind of goodness so once you get them all loosened they should pop out if it doesn't then it means one of them's too tight and that's it that's your little hard drive caddy be careful with it try not to spin them too much or whatever it's the solid state you know it's pretty safe but the disc and the and the one that's not solid state it's gonna be kind of nifty but anyway we'll set that over here to the side next step is gonna be to get rid of the optical drives here and actually before I even continue before I get into like the electronic stuff what you want to do before you even continue is once you have the battery out you want to get rid of any of the flea power which is like leftover power in the capacitor and stuff like that by holding the power button. And you're just going to hold that for, I don't know, I'm just going to do 10 seconds. Anyway, so yeah, we're just going to do that and then we're going to go ahead and start. Alrighty. So next step is I'm going to go ahead and make myself a little tape ream. I know that the optical drive or the CD-ROM drive, I'll just make it easy. Keep it old school. Does not have those little snap rings on the other side of the screw, so they will come out all the way. You want to keep track of them. And just, I put them in, I kind of put them in the same formation that I find them. So, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, top, right, Top left, bottom right, bottom left. Probably like the easiest way. It makes reassembly like a cake. Even if you forgot, you're like, what do I do? Oh yeah, here's my screws. Oh, and that's the way they go because they're basically the same shape that you took them out. Once you got that removed, you're gonna come over here. You have this little flap here, another one. Just remove that, like I said. Let it come out on its own. Just kind of pull it, rock it back and forth. Okay, see, just comes off. And then you're gonna go ahead and just slide this puppy out. I usually kind of grab right here. Boop. There it is, the CD-ROM drive. And see, I can move it around. My screws don't go anywhere. Okay, so now the thing we're gonna do, we'll do it the way the manual says. Okay, so you're gonna take this here, your little pry tool, and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna come over here and you're gonna lift these little white, white um, studs here and then the brown ones on this orange cable here. And you're just gonna lift it enough to where you can get the white connector to rise and boom. Yeah, so the reason I use plastic is if I 
slip somehow. It's not gonna mess anything up. And you wanna do this very slowly. You don't wanna just go on one side and just, you know, it'll just totally snap on you. Just work your, your you know, work your way up and down both sides. It should be very easy. And then you'll just feel it get loose and then it'll come out. So next step is you're gonna go ahead and get rid of this guy here. You're just gonna take your pry tool and just pop that white piece up. So just pop up and then you can pull it out. The, the When they add these little blue tabs to the ribbon cable, it's like, Oh, heaven. I'll go ahead and get this other one. I kind of use the edge of the, the frame. You don't ever want to push against the motherboard. Boom, pops up. Super simple. That one comes out. Here's a hidden one. You don't need to get this one. This one's attached to the top of the board, so you're not going to get that one. Here's a hidden one right here. I think this one just um, pushes forward, if I remember right. No, no, no. I don't remember right. It's actually a lift tab also. So we'll go ahead and just try and lift it up ourselves. Here it comes. Boom, okay, and then uh, pull it out. Be really careful when you lift it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of going off my finger and pushing upwards. I'm not putting pressure on the motherboard with like this corner of it, because then you could just cut, that'll just, it's no good. You already know that. So yeah, just kind of go off your fingers and I'm, I'm kind of quick at it, because I've been doing this a lot to a lot of different laptops. So anyway, this is where this little tape method that I've come up with, um, or I wouldn't say come up with, that I do. I'm sure a lot of other people might do the same thing. Comes in handy. So up here, these little four tight screws and little tight groups, those are part of the screen assembly that you're gonna have to take off so you can remove the screen and don't worry about removing the screen. It's really not that scary. I think this one fits these ones perfect, yeah. So this one's gonna be easy. So we'll take these ones out. One, two, kind of put them in place so you can see that. So as you can see, I don't have much space around me and really not hard to do. Okay, so now, so you got kind of a grouping here. Okay, you're gonna group this into two sections. Okay, let me zoom this back out. On this right side, I'm gonna put on my piece of tape, four screws, there should be nine in total. The left, the right side I should say, is gonna have four screws and we're gonna put them in the same orientation on the piece of tape up here that they are down here. I'm gonna take that out, put it at the bottom piece of my tape. Next, we're gonna do this M2.5 L8. Take that out and you're gonna get that one next. Put that kind of on top of it. Right here, the M25 L5 again also, but in, which under the, where the battery was. You're gonna put that underneath the other one, kind of in the similar um, orientation. And then this other one is another L8. And what this is gonna do is just get rid of the palm rest. Everything else, it doesn't really matter. So now you got four screws oriented in the correct orientation on your piece of tape for that side. And then we got to get a bigger piece of tape roll over here, because you're gonna have five screws on this side. So on this side, you have one underneath the CD-ROM drive, we'll say. That's an L5. Then on the bottom corner of my tape, go over here, the top corner, screwdriver, okay. And then you're gonna have three Three right here, one, two, and three. I want two underneath the battery and one just above the optical drive. Okay, so this one's just above top left corner slightly, so I'm gonna put that on my tape. And then I'm gonna do the two underneath the batteries, which are pretty straightforward. You could just, you know, put them underneath the other optical one. Those are the five that hold the palm rest on. So there you go. The screws are all nice and neat and, and um, organized over there. Got all the ribbon cables off, hard drives disassembled. That cute little sub right there. Little subwoofer, pumps out the base. So we're gonna flip this over now, we're done here. And what I always do is I always like to try and flip it towards me like I'm doing in case I did forget a screw or something, it'll fall off onto my little mat there and not something else or fall underneath you or under your thigh or into your magic um, carpet that seems to just eat something that falls on it and disappear forever. What I'm doing here now is I'm gonna go ahead and go to this top corner here. And this top left corner is one the one that I've noticed pops up the easiest. I'm gonna kind of pop it up and try and pry it. This is kind of scary because it feels scary, but don't be scared. You could just, you could pry it and it's not gonna hurt anything. You want the screen all the way open though. That's what's gonna get you, um, there you go. So take a pry tool and slide it. You can use a guitar pick, pop all this side up. Okay, so once you got enough popped up, you can start lifting this up and uh, don't be scared too. I mean, it all comes up, it feels scary because you're like popping it, but that's it. Okay, so the screen, hold this down because you don't want your screen to fall. So let's set the keyboard away from us. When you're done, be sure to run this under the sink to make sure it's clean. No, I'm just joking. Okay, so now we're here. There's a couple things that you're gonna need to do before you even start working on disassembling anything. One of them is to get this SLI cable off so you can get to this cable underneath and then that way you can lift off the, the hardware here. But I'm gonna start over here. There's two connectors here. You're gonna wanna just pry these off. They, they come off pretty good. I just kind of push against the screw and then pops off pretty easy. This one should just come off pretty easy too if you just pull on it, yeah. And then that's pretty much set to go. So once you got that going, there's a little screw up here. It's an M2.5 by five, just a little five screw. And you can set that aside. And since this is the one the one screw you need to like not really care to keep track of, just throw it on one of your pieces of tape and you'll know because it's a really small screw. And then this will just slide out and that's that one's kind of ready. Move that to the side. Now over here is where it gets kind of tricky. You're gonna wanna pull this SLI cable here, pop that one out and then pop this one out here. And you're gonna wanna be careful with these little like tapes here because you don't wanna mess up the 
adhesive. You want it to kind of sit right because it's kind of, I don't know, it's almost metal. And I think it's part of the thermal or something. But lift up very slow so you don't lose any adhesive. Boop. Ribbon cables are very delicate, so be very careful, please. I don't want to be uh, not responsible for you working on your laptop. If that, and then this one here, so just slide out. There's your SLI cable, yay! Okay, now we can get to this guy here, this little M8 connection. You can just shimmy that back and forth or even just pull in the little tab there. Should come out pretty simple. Boop. Okay, and then that's that. And the very last cable you're gonna need to do before you can start digging into your heat sinks is this, is this one here, a little blue tab. Pop up very simply. So now, last two screws. I'm gonna go ahead and make a little tape reel for this. Maybe attach it to my Alienware screen here. What do, you, what do they call this, a tape loop? Reel? I keep saying reel. Okay, so there's two screws on the left hinge here, these little big ray things. Take those off. They come out very slow because they're like really locked tight. I don't know. They're very tight screw. I mean, they fit exact. So these ones you have to be very careful with, especially when putting them back in because you want them to go in straight or else you're gonna major issues here. Okay, so one there, stick that to the screen. And then on the right side here, you're only gonna have one and that's really simple. So kind of just hold on to your screen. It should stay in place and I'll show you why, but it's always good to hold on to it. I trust myself though, so come on. This is what I mean by it's lightly magnetic. It won't even grab it. Okay, there it goes. Now move this in out of the way. Now check this part. This is a really cool part. This whole thing will just slide up. Look at these brackets. Look at those big old plugs. That's crazy. That's what holds it on while you're working on it. All right, now we can dig into the good stuff. This, I don't want to mess with. I already did it, but I'm going to go ahead and reseed it just in case. This one here is the one that gets hot. So that's the first one we're going to remove. What's cool about these screws is that they don't need to be put anywhere. They have the little snap ring on the bottom. They don't lose anything. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pry this up. I go off of this screw here and kind of push against this little like groove. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see it. And you're just going to kind of lift up on it tilt. Okay, so pull that up and just kind of pull it straight out. Oh, actually, it was the ceramic paste. All right, guys, so scratch that, reverse it. I guess it was actually the ceramic paste that sucked. The Arctic Silver was running pretty good keeping it under 40. So I'm almost wondering if I should just try the Arctic back on there or if I should just leave it. Clean it off. So I'm gonna start with the heat sink here first. Ew, gross, get off my computer. And I totally forgot, the, the other two main things you need is the isopropyl alcohol. The, the higher the percentage, the better. The microfiber we're gonna use here. Clean this off. We're gonna clean it off very good. Not just with the microfiber, but we're gonna go ahead and get more alcohol. Just using ceramic stuff, I'm getting kind of the black residue, so what I'm doing is I'm just cleaning it until uh, there's none of that left. Just going to touch it up with some more alcohol until everything's completely gone. So I'm going to take the dust off, of course. Okay, and we're going to set this to the side because we don't need it just yet. And we're going to get this top section here. If I get in the way, I'm sorry, you know what I'm doing though. I'm just cleaning it. Okay, now we're going to use a clean Q-tip and just get off whatever residue we can. Kind of a long process. Do not skimp this part. If you see little white streaks still under there, that's a little thermal residue and you do not want that. All right, now we're going to use a cool laboratory liquid pro. So get your little crack needle here, add it to the guy here. Very careful with this stuff and I'm talking very careful. Take your time here, just kind of put the weight on your finger on there until it kind of comes out and that's it. You li it's literally like, if you could see that, it's like a grain of, of salt. That's all I'm gonna add to mine. Use a nice, nice little tight um, Q-tip here. And you just kind of kind of rub it in circles and it, and it should um, heat up enough to where it'll spread. Kind of going in X first. Who knows, I might throw a little more on there. You're literally just wanting to paint it. You're just painting thermal paste in place. You're not doing anything more than that. The thinner the layer, the better. So you could take all your excess you have on one side, start shifting it towards the other side. So if you look at this, let me see if I can get this kind of um, lifted to you guys. You're literally just painting it until it's silver. See, it's not, it's not like you're doing anything special to it. You're just coating it. And you don't want to put a ton. You're not supposed to put, like leave a lot on there, apparently. So now the next thing you're going to do is kind of see how your heat sink goes and you know how, how center it is on your heat sink. And you can do the same thing to your heat sink. So this will kind of let you see what I do. And this is why you don't put a lot because you're going to put about the same grain of rice on this side. And when these two sides blend and break in, you should have it melt together. And then the, they'll both be exactly enough that you need. I don't know if it makes any sense. I'm trying to focus, I guess. Anyway, so I go back out and corners kind of kind of go off the size here that I'm looking at and just um, since you're literally painting this in place you don't really have to do it too perfectly I guess it's better to use a brush but in the pro they just include the q-tips 
So I'm just creating a circle and all the excess that I have from the outside now I'm just kind of throwing towards the middle so that way when it does clamp on there and it does spread it doesn't spread to the outside of the edges. So you should have about the roughly the same square size there and then that's it so I'll just put it back on. Make sure you put this on very straight. Start clinking these screws down. I always put a little bit of pressure on the center just to and then blow off whatever excess there is. All right, so that's that. But yeah, you just basically put it back on, you know, check the seating, keep going in a star pattern until the screws are torqued. You don't want to strip them. And this one, you should have a lot better of an angle as I do this. Um, sorry about the noise in the background. My fiance is doing chores. Who does chores anymore? No, I'm just checking. Uh, all right, cool. So let's get this going. So now that you got that one done, we can do the second one. It's going to be super simple because all four of these screws on the right side are snapped closed. So we'll just go ahead and take it off. So same thing. There's a screw right under here and you're just going to kind of pry up. Don't push too hard. Just let it pry up normal. You don't want to do damage to the motherboard. Literally, it'll it'll come up on its own if you just press it. So let's see how our Arctic Silver did. Oh my God, beautifully. Look how well evenly distributed that is on here. Did break in pretty quick after about a day or two. Today we're going to use all cool lab laboratory it's, it's good stuff okay so right now we're gonna go ahead and just clean this so let's do that and that is clean all right that is pretty dang clean so now at our grain here like I said this part takes forever because you don't want to put too much pressure at all and I'm actually adding between halfway between the size of a okay that's like more like a grain of salt but that's fine that's all we need so I'll use the same part of the other one that I was using earlier dab it gonna get it liquefied might actually add a little more to this one I'm not seeing any excess on this one okay so that one is coated very very light coat I actually am going to add a tiny 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 bit more like literally a speck up to the middle Should be plenty right there and then we're gonna go ahead and spread that a little more actually we'll just leave it there Okay, now we're gonna do the heat sink. Same thing, kinda kinda go off the sides there. I'll, I will add a tiny bit more to the heat sink just cause it, it isn't too much on the actual um, CPU there. I mean the GPU, probably actually gonna be perfect. So we'll go in a little X here. This is just what I do, the little X thing. Cool laboratory spreads very well. And I'm happy with that. So, looks good, it's all coated on there. See a shine to it. Let's install this one again. It's really straight. Cool. Once you kind of got them all on there and all screws are in there, it's not going to move on you. You can just go ahead and crank it down. Push it down a little bit. Yeah, see this time it actually... Turned a little more. And that's that. I think if I want to now, we could do the CPU. That's basically the same thing you're going to do on the CPU. So I checked the CPU just cause, and Cool Laboratory does get stuck to this heat sink. So if you want to use it again, you're going to have to basically sand and polish it back up to like 4,000 grit and then go over it with either a magic eraser, since that's just a fine sandpaper, or or it's going to have to be um, like steel wool or something, but you'll get it polished. Anyway, so there's that. That's done. And now we can start working on the reassembly, which is very simple. So what I'm going to do first, 